good afternoon, and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Would you please join together in singing number 194, Praise to the Lord, number 194. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and thus prepare for the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who never leaves his flock untended. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the repentant. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those that you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. 
As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell within me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? They, and they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. I think sometime that amazement Jesus had at the lack of faith from those folks who thought, this is the hometown kid, this is not anything special, this can't be happening, is the same kind of lack that we have when we fail to believe that God can work with whatever he has to work with, and that includes us. It's an act of pride and selfishness at times when we hold ourselves in and only will step out when we are absolutely assured not only that we can do something, that perhaps we can do it better than others. And yet, I think all of us can identify, at least I hope so, otherwise you've not really embarked on the adventure of life, of a time that we felt that nudge, heard that call, took that leap, and stood amazed, and maybe many years later, continue to stand amazed at what God does with what he has to work with. It's his MO. We look at the people he chose throughout the pages of the Old Testament. We look at the background and the lives of those who today we venerate as saints. He qualifies those he calls and wonderful things happen. And yet, we can get discouraged or we can give up or we can fail in perseverance when we don't get the results that we want. Well, I'll invest my time in this, but what am I gonna get for it? And yet oftentimes we plant seeds that others will water and that someone else will harvest. Just like at times we're in situations where we have the benefit of being the waterers or being the harvesters of what others did in their place and time. Whether that be concrete acts of service or whether it be words of wisdom or witness of profound faith. And so today we're sent from this liturgy to think about when you and I might have actually thwarted the plan of God by being too concerned with our qualifications or lack thereof, or perhaps at times what we have missed by failing to persevere. The scriptures today give us great encouragement to not repeat that in the future, when God would nudge us beyond our comfort zone, call us with an opportunity see in us what we can't quite see. We hear in the first re reading, God's calling the prophet and saying, look, just go and do what I'm telling you. They're a rebellious house. They're probably, some of them are probably not gonna listen to you. But they'll know that a prophet has been among them. That's it. That you say what needs to be said. That you love the way you, you need to love. That you show mercy the way mercy needs to be shown. Whether or not it is accepted, whether it's criticized, the perseverance is the best advertisement of the truth and the value of what you're proclaiming. What about Paul? He goes even further. He says, I've come to understand when I'm powerless, it's then that I'm strong. When I admit that I don't know everything or I can't do everything, then I can begin to do something. In the words of soon-to-be-canonized Oscar Romero, 
when we realize that we are not the master builder, we are the workers, that we are ministers and not messiahs, that we can't do everything, then we can begin to do something and do it quite well. In our weaknesses and tribulations, our eyes must be fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. But I guess the question that lingers with us is, do I have that faith? Or do I still believe God's there with the evaluation form, ready to thumbs up or thumbs down my effort? If that's the case, we will live and die and not even begin to tap what God could do through us. In the beautiful hymn that will accompany the preparation to the right today, well known, in which we echo the scripture of presenting ourselves before the Lord in his mission, as did the prophets of old, as did Mary at the Annunciation. One of the verses reminds us that the results are not always going to be what we want. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. But the composer doesn't go on to say, and so I went somewhere else. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. And then the perennial question, whom shall I send? May we honestly not only sing today, but say every day, here I am, Lord. Maybe to soften a heart, maybe to get someone thinking, even if we get a scowl or a shake of the head or get a little uncomfortable by saying what people really sometimes don't want to hear. Cloaked in charity, always in honesty. Love doesn't remain politically correct. It becomes a revelation of the truth. As we receive the Eucharist today, the song prayer reminds us of that beautiful passage of sacred scripture when we set ourselves to such things and wonder if it's not going to be through my talent, then how will it happen? I will lift my eyes to the mountains. From where shall come my help? My help shall come from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I think all of us at one point or another, as we really came to conversion in our lives, and I don't just mean becoming Catholic because we can pull out a certificate that says something was done to us, or an affiliation that surfaced, but when we really begin to get it, when our prayer becomes a conversation, when we actually dare pray this way, not only telling God what we want, but then listening and asking him, now you tell me what you want. Have you ever prayed that way? Or are we always reading the list, telling God what we want? There should be as much time, if not more, listening after asking him the question, and what do you want? And when we hear it, sometime at first we go, are you crazy? Or sometimes we feel we're unworthy. Do you like pay attention to my confessions? We begin to think that somehow God is clueless or he wouldn't be nudging us. And yet he knows us better than we know ourselves. I think in those moments where it comes together, we do strive to give it all to him. But that must endure. And in all the little situations, we must persevere with that self-gift. There's a wonderful story that I conclude by sharing with you. A priest on his ordination day at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York was overwhelmed by the grace of that day as he gave himself totally to the Lord and to the service of his people. You know, like of the day you gave yourself to your spouse in marriage, or you gave yourself to a particular uh, cause in life, or you gave yourself when you said yes to life as parents, to your children, not just when they're cute, but when they know a lot more than you, you know, the junior high years. And then to have the humility sometimes when you watch them grow into adulthood and see some of it, they get better than I did. 
And so he said after this wonderful ordination celebration and giving blessings to long lines of people, he went out the front door of the cathedral, filled with the grandeur of it all, as such moments can, can make our heads spin. And he said there was an old priest outside who walked up to him and he extended his hand, and he wasn't asking for a blessing, and when he extended his hand, he thought he was gonna congratulate him. And all the old man said was, as he shook his hand, he said, you just gave it all to him today. Don't spend the rest of your life taking it back. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father, Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With trusting hearts, we bring our needs to the Lord. For our church to be a place of encounter with God, dwelling within us and among us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world to know peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the sick and comfort of the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all discerning priesthood and religious life, and for seminarians Joe and Dan in their summer ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy in heaven for our departed loved ones, especially Dorothy Vinciguerra, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we carry here in our hearts, for the people of the Dominican Republic and for families separated or in crisis here in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make this prayer in the confidence of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please join together in singing number 379, Here I Am, Lord, number 379.
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ the Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You give this, us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he spoke your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, and the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you have made your own for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. 
Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory, and in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times and the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and all the saints, who shall praise and exalt you in Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is
is yours forever and ever. Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my presence, but only the word of my soul. my 
trust in you to forgive every hurt and to loosen every burden to let go and to follow
Looking through the bulletin, you'll see an entire page that has both a narrative and uh, a photo tour through the recent parish mission trip to Ecuador. More will be coming on these opportunities in the future. For today, please uh, take, a, take a good look and look for future uh, times to gather and to be able to build this new connection in our community. I remind all uh, young men of high school age, Quo Vadis Days are coming in the month of August. It's a wonderful way to enjoy a week of uh, fellowship, sports, activity with other young men your age, and also to pause in those days to look at how one uh, enters into more than just, so what do I want to do with my life? But how can I discern what God's given me and, and how to best be able to put that at service, making decisions about college, etc. So it's a wonderful, it'll be an action-packed week, but also throughout the country where this Quo Vadis camp has been offered, it's had tremendous, tremendous results, and young men keep re returning year after year throughout their, hall, their high school years. So the forms are in the racks at the door, and I encourage uh, high school men of our parish to consider it. As was mentioned, in our, this is Mission Co-op Sunday in our parish. Every parish of the diocese is assigned someone to come to speak, to speak about a particular missionary outreach of the church. And this year, we are asked to support with our prayers and any offerings we'd like to make uh, the work of the, in the Dominican Republic by the Redemptorist community. And so I want to thank our guest speaker uh, and also invite you as you're leaving church today. There are baskets at both side doors and on the poor box in the center to receive whatever you'd like to contribute. And thank you uh, in advance. In keeping with my homily about having the faith to be water walkers, to step out with our eyes fixed on Jesus, it's only when Peter took his eyes off Jesus that he began to sink. Uh, please look at the listing in the bulletin of upcoming needs of time and talent. As we move forward with moving from maintenance to mission, you'll see that there's a number of new task force and committees that will be created. Um, those of you who have particular expertise and experience in these areas, I invite you to email me to tell me about that um, and to offer. And at the end of summer, we'll begin to try to group these uh, under the umbrella of our pastoral council. So uh, please check out that rather lengthy announcement and varied opportunities uh, in today's bulletin. I also would like to uh, thank you for your tremendous response for Seminarian Joe. His birthday is this Wednesday. If you have yet to send a card a note and would like to, his summer uh, address is in the bulletin. He'll be coming back with us uh, at the end of July. So uh, just take the time to send that note or that card. But last weekend, unfortunately, many of you were willing to contribute toward the gift of those volumes of the Summa Theologica. And I said no to you the minute you walked out the door, because one generous parishioner said, I'll take care of it, as I was coming to the plaza. However, I got back to the rectory and found out that what I had announced was one part of the series, and that there was much more. And so on Sunday morning, people very generously responded, and so we have ordered the entire complete set, uh, helpful not only in seminary years, but then beyond that in ministry and teaching, etc. And so if you had uh, intended last week to uh, make that your gift for Seminary and Joe, the volumes are $40 each. However, you don't have to buy a volume if you contribute toward it. But if you're interested today, you can see me uh, in the back of the church. And then when you send them a note or card, just mention um, that you contributed to that um, as your gift. There's a lot more. It's all in the bulletin. And a new 2020 club will begin in a little while. Congratulations to all the bonus drawing winners at the end. 20 bucks gives you 20 weeks, weekly chance, and then at the end, the bonus drawings. And the funds help the development and expansion of our growing parish and its ministry. So thank you in advance for those who supported last time and who plan to do so today. If you've never been in it and you're interested, see Joe out on the plaza. He'll help you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. When I first arrived in this parish, um, I used to joke that it looked like sometime a parking lot for walkers in the back of the church. 
That's wonderful that people who have limited mobility still make their way and come to church. It's even more wonderful now that in addition to the walkers that are there, many times there are a bunch of strollers. Our parish is growing in young families and young people, and today we had a wonderful little arrangement that I think emphasizes that and also calls all young people to their active role, a sign of hope for our future. Today we have a young dad who was our master of ceremony, and his wife, a young new mom, was our lector. And then we have Gabriel Joseph, who couldn't just be kind of thrown and left in a pew. And so we had a parishioner who has three adult sons who played uh, new mother today and handed over Gabriel while mom came up to do the readings. That's something that we haven't had to arrange here before, but it is certainly something we'll be happy to arrange at any time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join together in singing number 197, Beautiful Savior, number 197. Jesus is faithful. 